All right, this video is on the having clause in SQL. And having goes with the group by clause, and it allows you to limit which groups are shown. So if you're not familiar with group by, you might check out these other videos, um, you know, with, uh, the group by part one, part two, part three. And um, I'm going to go ahead and use the Northwind database, and we'll use a very simple query from the products table. So here I'm showing the category and the product and my intent is to group by the category and then aggregate something about the products. So I'm grouping by the category here and determining the average unit price of products in each category. So in category 1 the average unit price is 38.15 or so. Now suppose that we'd like to only see high priced categories. Well, we could maybe do this, just order by the the um, average unit price, and I see category 6 comes up as the highest one. Um, but maybe I want to see something like, you know, uh, over a certain amount, or just limited categories, not all of them. In this case, I'm showing all of them. Uh, so I might be able to do something like the top clause, which... Uh, is non ANSI standard and uh, what it does is it gives me the top records out of a set of records so here I'm getting the top five categories um, when I order by the average unit price descending but what if I want to have a cutoff based on the average unit price so let's say I want to see something like above 30 uh, now I could do a top three but of course I don't you know in the future it might not be only three categories with those. So, so this number is kind of an artificial number. So what if I want to have a cutoff here? And uh, that's where I would use the having clause. So there's a statement specifically meant to do that. And here's where it is. It comes after group by. And it's very clearly stated, so it's exactly what I want. I want groups whose average is above 30. So let me run that. And there they are, the top three. So the having clause is similar to the where clause in that this is a logical expression. So uh, it evaluates to true or false, but it evaluates to true or false based on the group, in which case this is, in this case, it's the category. The WHERE clause uh, is based on a logical expression that's based on a field in a record. So, uh, again, let me say that the logical expression in a WHERE is evaluated for each record. So in our case, that would be a product, and we could eliminate or keep products based on some field in the product record. For having, the logical expression is based on each group. So in this case, our group represents a category, and I could limit based on an aggregation, a min or a max or an average. So consider this example. It's the same as above, only my having has changed where I'm saying only include categories that have more than two products in them. So notice this is having count, right? So havings usually read having count, having sum, having min, having max. Um, where clauses usually read where some field, where some field, so consider this next example. Uh, we have show me only the categories whose minimum unit price is greater than 5. So notice in these top three examples here that this part didn't change. Right? What's in the select list didn't change. I'm always showing the category ID and the average unit price of those categories. And the values always stay the same. So um, I can limit which categories are being shown without rewriting my select list. Now, um, consider this, that if I take my categories and average, show the average, so I've grouped by, 
But then I add a where clause. Notice that these numbers have changed. Right? So um, because I'm only including certain records into the groups, now the average that's being calculated in that group can change because the products that are in the group have changed. So here's a good way of thinking about the order. When I have a, a more complex uh, select statement with a where and a group by and a having and an order by, think of the where occurring first where the records are eliminated prior to the groupings uh, being made. Group by comes next, so anything that makes it past the where clause will be put into groups based on your group by statement. Next, groups are eliminated uh, based on some aggregation, a sum, an average, a count, a min. Uh, so the groups are eliminated after the where and the grouping. And then finally, the order by occurs at the, at the end. So let's look at a, a larger example, um, just that's a little bit more realistic. It's got a join included. And uh, just see how that looks. And notice that I've also done a calculation inside of the sum statement. So in this case, just to, to summarize this, um, I'm going to take the products that are in categories 1 or 3 and only take those and group them by the supplier. And then within those groups, I will calculate this sum. And I will also count up how many products are in each of those suppliers. And then I will eliminate some of the suppliers based on the having clause. And then finally, I will order by the value of the inventory. So a few things to note about that. Um, I have included here uh, the primary key of the suppliers table, even though it's not being displayed. And that's so that in the case where I have multiple multiple suppliers with the same company name, they're insured to be in separate groups. So if I group by only the company name, uh, if I had three companies with the same name, they would all be uh, grouped into the same group and my results would not be accurate. Um, notice also that the where and the having clause up here are fairly independent. So I could change something like an add add another category without having to rewrite other pieces. I could change my having clause and add an and and another condition in there without having to rewrite how the grouping occurs or how my sum statement in the select clause has to, has to be. So that's not to say that the results won't change. Of course the results will change. But um, think of these different clauses as being fairly independent in terms of editing. If I edit one of the sections, I don't have to edit all of the, or change the other sections. Now, another interesting note here is that having is more of a convenience method and a clarity method than uh, do we logically need the having clause. So if you take my first example here that's a having, we can rewrite that as a subquery. So what I've done is I've taken the uh, subquery that just gets the category and the average unit price and I've renamed it as a table called category subquery. From there I'm displaying the category ID and the average unit price, so this field and this field, and now my having has been converted into a WHERE clause. So it's a WHERE clause based on a field in a subquery. So it can be done. I would say that this is probably not as clear and direct as this. And uh, this idiom or this language feature is well known uh, by database people. So this, I would have to scratch my head to figure out exactly what the programmer intended versus this, which is obvious. Um, 
also, I would say that this gets the subquery approach gets really ugly in uh, you know, more complicated situations. So that last query that was large, I'll show you the the version. So this is the having version of the previous subquery uh, that gives me all of the records that I want, but it is really quite complex and would take me quite a while to figure out what was going on and compare that to this query which is fairly direct. Uh, it's a company with a sum, I join it, I've got a where condition, I've got a group by and an account. Here uh, I'm not sure what this is. It would take me, again, it would take me a while to figure that out and what was intended. So uh, thanks for watching. That's the having clause.